Hello everyone, this is Lynn Schneider, and welcome to another episode of Friday Finds for August 18th, 2023. Thanks so much for listening. So I think it's fair to say that Google has been for many years the dominant player in internet search. It really didn't have a lot of competition to contend with, but of course, recently its dominance has been challenged with the introduction of artificial intelligence bots by OpenAI with ChatGPT and Microsoft's Bing. So these developments sort of caught Google off guard. And ever since, they've been trying to play catch up. So, of course, they have developed their own AI system, which they call BARD, not to be confused with NLS BARD, of course. (laughs) But basically, BARD has been sort of the artificial intelligence underdog for a long time. And Google is really trying hard to change that. And over the past few months, they've made a lot of tweaks and changes to BARD And it has improved. It definitely has improved. I think it is not really getting the attention that it deserves. But one of the things that Google wants to improve in their system is Bard's ability to give advice. So they've contracted with a company, and this company has assembled over 100 PhDs in different fields. I imagine that some of them would be like psychology and psychiatry or whatever, to help Bard to be more engaging, to be able to give personal advice, life advice, they call it. Um, Right now, they sort of feel like the output of Bard is sort of soulless, and it's not as empathetic or you know, it's it's more robotic in its output. So they want to improve this. Now, when you go on the BARD page, I know because I've been there, but they do have warnings about not using BARD for things like economic or medical advice. And I assume that includes mental health advice as well. But this is interesting because Other chatbots do give advice, personal advice. Um, I I like Bing because it's more conversational. It doesn't always have the answers, but it will do a web search to try to help you find a particular solution to a problem or issue that you're having. I can't wait to ask Google's Bard a question like, well, How do I deal with the stress of websites that have tons of advertising that really annoy me? (laughs) I I mean, I have a lot of things I could ask her advice about, but this is interesting. And and this is, of course, in the research stage and they are going to, they're not exactly sure how they're going to roll this out, but we should expect to see Google's Bard become more conversational more engaging, more empathetic. They want to make it better at teaching skills, helping people plan things like budgets and meal planning and nutrition, things like that. So I imagine that our search engine will become smarter. And you'll be able to go to Google to look up the number for your local marriage counselor Or you can just drop into Bard and ask for some relationship advice. (laughs) We live in interesting times, don't we? So if you are a parent or a grandparent or somebody that has a kid in your life, you know that lovely little back-to-school ritual of making purchases that the student will need for the school year. One of those purchases might be a printer. So there was an article in Ars Technica that I thought was interesting, and they were talking about the all-in-one printers, you know, the ones that scan, fax, and print. Now, they mentioned HP, um, but they also mentioned 
a few other companies in the article. Essentially, what is happening with these printers is that they are being designed in such a way that you cannot scan and fax without ink. Now, of course, consumers have been complaining for a long time about the cost of ink. And if you have an inkjet printer, you know how expensive the ink can be for those printers. But of course, the idea that a person would need to have ink in order to fax and scan is ridiculous. So in 2022, there was a class action lawsuit that was filed against HP. And HP has been fighting this class action lawsuit for a long time. And in 2023, in the beginning of the year, like March or so, the complaint was dismissed, but was allowed to be amended. Now, legally, I don't understand that, but since it was allowed to be amended, it was amended. So basically what this complaint is saying is that HP is not telling shoppers that this is the case, that this ink situation, they won't be able to scan or fax in, in these models without ink. So people may not be aware. And ex for example, if you're blind, you might really be using that printer as a scanner, just a scanner. So, you know, for you to have to have ink in the printer uh, is pretty ridiculous, actually. And this complaint, again, as, as I said, was dismissed and then amended. Now, um, of course, HP won the first round of that suit and had it dismissed, but they lost the second. And I should note that HP is not the only company that has been called out, sued for this type of behavior. And um, so I don't know how it has been allowed to continue, but I would say if you are in the market for a printer, you might just want to take a look at this article in Ars Technica so you know which models have this particular um, issue where you cannot scan or fax without ink in the printer. Many of us um, as blind folks have our groceries delivered to us. It's very convenient. It allows you to have some independence in terms of how you shop, what you get, etc. And I know that for myself, especially during the pandemic, having groceries delivered was absolutely just a godsend for me. And there have been times in my life when my mom, I, I'm a caregiver to my mom. And so even you know, doing shopping um, orders is difficult. I mean, giving people a list of things to get, finding people to shop for you. So these delivery services have been in my opinion, a great asset to us. And my favorite delivery service is Instacart. Many of us use Instacart. Now, like everything else, the prices have increased. I did a shopping order yesterday and I was like, oh my gosh, I just spent, you know, 300 bucks and shh, what's for dinner? <laughs> you know, it's, it's really tough right now. So there was an article in Business Insider where a customer discovered that she actually paid a hundred bucks more for her order than the store receipt. Now, according to this article, the app that the Instacart shoppers use tells the shoppers to not give the customer the store receipt because they will be getting a digital receipt. Well, in this case, the customer was given the store receipt by the shopper, even though the shopper wasn't really supposed to. So she compared the two receipts and noticed that there was a huge difference between the receipt that the store generated and the receipt that Instacart generated. And, you know, this... <laughs> It was like a hundred bucks difference. So I really find this unfortunate. Um, 
Now, the um, article mentions that these markups can really add up quickly, especially if you're getting things like alcohol. Um, and I guess it's not clear where the markup is coming from. Is it coming from Instacart itself or is it coming from the retailers who allow their stores to be listed on Instacart? You know, are they determining the prices or is Instacart doing a markup? Now, I'm not sure if this person had the Instacart Plus or whether that would even matter. But the article, um, in the article, one of the shoppers mentioned that when you're looking at the retailers and the retailers that are advertised on Instacart, the important thing to note is whether it says that they will, that you'll get in-store prices because otherwise, um, you know, it's, you just don't know. But it seems to me that it would be nice if we had a little more transparency about these markups, where they're coming from. Um, and having the paper receipt would be helpful in that regard because you could then compare it to the digital receipt. But one of the shoppers said that customers are starting to notice it. And I don't know how they're noticing it unless they see the paper receipt. But it's funny, I've just never really thought about that. You know, you get these digital receipts from delivery places and you don't get the original and you have no idea, you know, what's being marked up and, you know, how the charges are being determined ultimately. So it's something to think about anyway when you're doing your shopping and having stuff delivered. So with that, I think we're going to sign off for this week's episode of Friday Finds. My name is Lynn Schneider, and I really do appreciate your subscribing and listening. And of course, we love your feedback. So if you have any feedback, any comments on the program, please feel free to send them to feedback at unmute.show. That's feedback at unmute.show. So I hope you have a great weekend and a great week ahead and that you'll join me again next week for another episode of Friday Finds. Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, myself, Michael Babcock, and Marty Sobo go live in ACB community to answer your technology questions. How do you join in? Couple of ways. Use Alexa, your computer, or the new ACB Link app to listen to ACB Media 5. You can also join in in Clubhouse or visit acb.community to learn how to join us live in Zoom. Every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, we'll see you there with your tech questions. Yeah.